Well, now what I'd like to talk about is refilling the system. We just drained and flushed the system, and what we'd like to do now is refill it to the best of our ability. Okay. The problem is, in the past, the way we've always refilled the radiator system is just by taking a, uh, a container of coolant and container of water or maybe a garden hose and pouring it in the system. Well, first of all, that invites air to be trapped in the system. And air is not good, I take it. Air is very bad in the system, and, and there's multiple reasons. One, foremost, it probably invites the most amount of corrosion that can get into a system. If there's no air in the cooling system, it can't corrode, it can't rust, um, unless you're just using straight water, and that would also invite it. Um, so we have to have a mixture of coolant. We want to have 50% coolant, and we want to have 50% distilled water. We don't want to use tap water. Um, but the reasons, again, that air is bad, not only for corrosion, is that it also creates hot spots, steam pockets, and air that gets trapped up around the thermostat is going to uh, keep the thermostat from operating properly because it takes a much higher steam temperature to open that thermostat than it does uh, water or coolant temperature around that thermostat itself. It, and you know, there's lots of pockets around here in the, in the engine. Mm -hmm. And all of those pockets are very difficult to get all the air out of because as you start filling the system, it fills up from the bottom. So it starts filling up from the bottom and the liquid raises up and then it just traps air up in the top portions. Well, these kind of engines aren't nearly as bad as some of the front wheel drive engines and vehicles uh, that may have rear heater cores as well. Heater cores that may be up higher than the engine or heater cores that are way in the back that maybe have some traveling uh, routes for the coolant that has to get back there in the plumbing. Those are very easy to get water or air trapped in as well. So is there a way that we can fill this up to capacity while removing all the air? Actually, there's a fantastic tool that we have, and it's called the airlift. And the airlift tool, what it's going to do is it's going to draw a vacuum on this system. And it's going to, it's going to create a lower pressure system over there than it is out here. And then that way we can open a valve and fill it back up with coolant to 100% capacity. There won't be any air trapped in the system at all. That sounds great. Let's see how this works. Okay. Okay. So here's, here's the tool. And uh, basically, um, it's got a cone-shaped design on it, and that fits in every kind of radiator neck there is. So you wouldn't ever need an adapter, would you? I don't need any adapters. Uh, it will fit these kind of vehicles. It'll fit heavy trucks. Uh, this will work on everything, big or small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use shop air to create a vacuum on this system. So reach over here, grab my air. I'm going to hook up my quick disconnect. And you can see it's starting to draw a vacuum on the scale. And look at these hoses, Mark. You see them starting to shut and close down? That's because we're drawing a, we're drawing a good vacuum on this system. Now this isn't used to evacuate the coolant itself, we're just getting rid of the air at this point. We've already drained the system. Great. Just that quick, we've got a full vacuum on the system. You can see, these hoses are completely collapsed now. Yeah, now what you'll notice here also, Mark, is that this is another pressure test. So we're also checking the system for leaks right now as well. We can see here on the scale that this isn't moving at all. So we know that the system is not leaking anywhere as well. Should we be concerned about how these hoses are collapsed? Could this possibly damage them? This isn't going to damage the hoses, but one thing you might want to watch out for is if you're dealing with a hose that's very old, you might hear it cracking, or it might get very, very uh, deformed shape right up against the edge of the connection. Then you know maybe you've got a little weak point there in the hose. But this, this is going to be just fine for the hose. It'll expand out uh, right back to normal. So now we can take that off. It's holding vacuum. And by the way, that pressure, the, pr the vacuum test is very effective for finding even very small leaks on uh, heater cores even, uh, and uh, head gaskets as well. Now, what we need to do first of all is we need to mix up some coolant. Okay. So let's, let's do that briefly. And what I'd like to do while I'm talking about the coolant here is we're going to mix, mix this 50-50. And like I just said a minute ago, we want to use distilled water. Distilled water is very important. And the reason is, is because tap waters contain too many minerals and deposits, and they're going to clog up your radiator and your cooling system. Those deposits will get into your um, engine compartment, their heater cores, and it'll just cause you a lot of expense down the road. So it's always best to use distilled or deionized water when you're trying to take care of your cooling system. 
I've got a couple of radiators over here that I can show you. Now here's an example of what happens when you use tap water. So all these mineral deposits inside here? Yeah, that's very bad. That'll clog up a system and, and you'll lose a lot of your cooling capacity. Did you know that um, a sixteenth of an inch of scale and deposit on an engine surface where you're trying to transfer heat from is equivalent to trying to transfer heat through about five inches of cast iron. Wow. Yeah, and you can see the rest of this radiator. It's not in real good shape either. And still, this is, this is also from corrosion. All along the edges, both sides here, you can see how terrible it's been to have all that corrosion inside that system. So there again, that's another roadside breakdown waiting to happen. Okay, now we've got our coolant mixed up here. We've got a 50-50 mixture, distilled water, and ethylene glycol. I'm going to mix that up. Now we're going to hook this hose up to this tool. And the first thing you're going to notice here, Mark, is that there's air trapped in this hose. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to suck 40 cc's of air back into the engine. That you just sucked all the air out of. That's exactly the thing I was trying to avoid. Now, 40 cc's is not that much, but I'm going to show you how I can quickly eliminate that. Uh, once I, I pre-fill pre this hose up, I'll just draw a new vacuum on this, and it'll only take me a few seconds. Watch how quick this fills up. I'm always amazed with this. Watch how fast this coolant will get right up to the top of this hose. Now I'll crack this one open here. Boom. Whoa. Isn't that fast? Less okay. than a second. Yeah, very quick. Okay, now I've got this disconnected. I'm just going to let that sit here for a minute. I'm going to grab my air again. And we're going to draw a new vacuum. We really haven't lost any vacuum on there, but we want to make extra sure that we got all the air out. Just like that, we're up to full vacuum again. Okay, now, in the past, when I've been filling cooling systems, this is something that could take you on a difficult vehicle to bleed air out of. This could take you a half an hour to 45 minutes to fill the system. Because you've got to fill it up, bleed the system, turn on the cooling fans, jack up the car maybe to a certain position, try to get the highest point of that vehicle and bleed air out of it again. This can take a technician, like I say, a long time and time is money. So I want you to watch. You can time me if you want. Just how fast this fills up. Okay, here we go. You can watch the hoses are going to start expanding. There they go. I can just watch my scale to tell when it's done. Just like that, we're full. Oh, that was less than a minute. Yeah. Now, most of the import cars that have done smaller engines, I can fill those up in 20 seconds. Now, to me, that's very valuable because a car sitting in the shop is uh, worth a lot of money to a technician. Well, that was fast and, e and easy. Very easy. I, I won't fill a car any other way now once I've seen this. Great tool. And uh, we should also say that this will also work with uh, overflow systems. You know, some vehicles don't have radiator caps anymore. We can hook this tool right up to the overflow system and fill it up from there and draw a vacuum from there as well. So that's good to know. Hey, Mark, I want you to look at this. Now, this is uh, the last bit of coolant that we had. We, 
we took the drained coolant and what was remaining of the coolant we didn't use, and when we filled up into our last gallon jug here, you notice we didn't fill up as much as we had to begin with. No, we've got quite a bit of space here left. That's, in fact, how much air was trapped in that engine. Wow. So you can just see that by refilling it with a vacuum fill process, just like they do at the factory, we get a much better fill than, than we would have had if we would have tried to fill it up conventionally. It's very impressive. Yeah. Now we're not going to have those slushing noises from the heater core. Our thermostat's going to work better. It's going to be much more efficient at transferring that heat away from the engine. Great.